Hello and welcome to the first video in which we will take a look at how to create an environment or a worker class, let's call it that way, that will take all of the DAISY configuration files or configuration entries into one package that you will be able to edit or do whatever whatever kind of manipulation you want with the data. Uh, for this, of course, we have to first take a look at the files, how they look, and given the structure of the configuration file, we can come to some of the conclusions which I've got here. So there's special type of files inside the configuration file. And these are, for example, text, number, uh, or boolean, or this, this one, or some kind of special text. And of course, in this file, we have these uh, key bindings. So I've come, I've come up with a list here that have some special signature, some kind of a signature character that we can use to differentiate between them and use those to separate them inside the worker. Of course, I have added player name as, as well as last multiplayer server name as special because these, depending on the name that you have as a player or the multiplayer server has as a name of the server, uh, they can also incorporate any of the other special uh, marks. So, given the conclusion of this, let's go to Visual Studio where I have created two separate projects. Okay, it's one solution, Daisy Configuration Worker. Now, this is uh, a class library, so this will be built as a DLL, and another one that is just a normal console application. Now, since this is a library as itself, I've also named uh, the daisy config as daisyconfig.cs and I gave it the class name daisy config. Also, because this console does not accept this, it's not a part of it, we also had to right click references, add reference, go to project, solution, and put this checkbox on so we can reference it inside the console application. Now, in here, as I said, we have similar some. Uh, file types, well not file types, uh, configuration types, we are going to create a numeration field for all of these. I'm just going to go with public on everything, mostly everything, just to make it easy for starters, then we can go into private and things, or limiting, limiting some sort of access. Okay, so first thing, we need a public enumeration. Uh, let's call it line type. That's the first thing that came to mind, actually, so uh, it's good enough. So we have text, we have number integer, number double, boolean, uh, key binding, special text, and of course miscellaneous for all other, for example, like uh, these, you can't really put them as anything else and just push them back as they are. Now the goal of this is to create a robust system that will take all of these information and then flush it out back just as it came in except with the change parameters so it doesn't uh, shuffle these around or well we can of course set them to do that but that's not what we're going at here okay so when we go back to visual we can start building the class now, as I said, this is a daisy config class. Of course, we will need some, uh, we'll need two lists. I'm going to call them list. Now, of course, we need a type for each entry in, inside a configuration file. So let's just call it config entry. For now, we'll create the class later. Uh, so we need a profile config. Let's make that a property. We can just copy paste this and type in cfg since there are two files of course like daisy profile file and daisy.cfg uh, next on of course we will need some sort of a constructor let's just make it right here so public daisy config now uh, since this will be used as a class library we won't have any input output inside here we will create a constructor so that when the application is ran, some other application of course, it can reference the profile path because that's the most important one. 
there's only one DZ CFG, but there are multiple profiles possible on one account. So as an input parameter, I'm going to create a string, uh, let's just call it profile path. But as I said, we also need the CFG file. So for this, we don't know if it's all caps, if it's uh, lowercase or a mix between. So let's just get all the files from the folder where the profile path is located. We'll do that by typing this files equals uh, system IO directory get files. As a path, we'll take path get directory name of the profile path. And of course, we need a, a search pattern. And for this, we will just type in all of the files that end with CFG. And let's make this a list. Of course, you will need to reference the path using system IO. And we can now create a string CFG path. Let's call it this way. And it's located in files where uh, sorry habit path get file name without extension uh, let's just say so the path of x to lower just to make sure equals daisy so that's basically all we need here uh, let's take a single or Actually, let's go with first or default. It should be only one, so this should work as is. Since there's only one file that can be called this way and have this kind of extension. Now we can just load up those configuration files, but we'll, we'll get into this a bit later. First, let's create the class for the config entry. I'm going to create this class inside the daisy config class, so it will be like nested class. So the name is, as I said, public class config entry. A config entry should have, we should, at this point, we should know what kind of type of the entry we're dealing with. So let's just create a public uh, line type. I'll just call it type. Of course, we will need to know the entire line so we can use it later on as a reference so public string line get set now of as well something that would be useful at this point is to know the lowercase of the line so we can just create a public string I'm going to keep this line with a lowercase l just to differentiate them and all we need here is get line return line to lower and this is all we need here. Now, of course, uh, the config entry is going to be a base class, and then we will inherit the config entry class inside. Uh, let's, how should I put this? Inside classes that will differentiate between Boolean values, integer values, text, etc. Uh, so we are going to create two virtual functions, public virtual string k and the same thing for the value now I've put this value as a string for now but we'll have to change that later on you'll see when we get to that point and in here uh, because some rows are indented with a tab or multiple tabs as we can see here we're going to keep a track of these indentations with a simple integer and this integer does not have to be seen from outside so I'm going to keep it as internal file variable int indentations equals zero now of course we have to create the constructor for this so let's go with public config entry at this point we already know what we should already know what type of uh, the config entry is so let's go with line type type and we should take the whole line as is so 
string line. Inside the constructor, we can just type in type equals type. And with the line, at this point, we also have to take into consideration the indentations. So indentations equals. Now, this is a very cool linked little script for this. So we can go with line take while x equals t, which is a sign for a tab. And now we just count these and we should get all of the tabs that are up front. So it won't count the ones in the middle, it will only count the ones that are up front. So we have the indentations, we just have to take the line and we should trim the start of the line. So we take away those indentations. Just so we have a nice clean line inside the file, inside the en engine let's call it. And I'm going to set the key as null for now, value as well. Because this is a base class, it won't be used very much, so this is fine as it is. But the problem is, we are going to have to type type all those lines out, so we can for this we can override the to, to, to string function or method. So let's go with public override, string to string. Instead of this, uh, at this point we'll have to know what type of indentations we have. So I'm going to create a small function here. I'm just going to call it like indentation builder, let's say, plus the line itself. And since this doesn't exist yet, I'm going to generate a method. I'm going to keep this as internal as well, since it doesn't really have any point. And inside here, like all we need to do is create a new string, let's call it indents equals empty string. And now for int e equals zero, e less than indentations, e plus plus, indents plus equals t. And return indents. This is basically it for this. Now we have a normal printing of the line, of the basic line as it is as of this point. However, there's one thing we also need is to now create classes that will inherit this class. So let's go with, for, first I'm going to write for the normal text, so like public class, let's call it text value. So that's, that, that basically defines and it explains what's this about. And of course, for the baseline, I'm going to use the config entry. So inside here, uh, let's write the constructor first. Public text value. Of course, we need to inherit, uh, take at least two parameters because this takes at least two parameters. And we don't need anything else really. At this point, we'll uh, parse the data inside the constructor here. That's the best approach for this. So let's go with one type, type string uh, line and we can just forward these to base type line now what we need inside here uh, well this is a bit tricky let's now go with the properties we can again type the public now we had the virtuals one here we can type in override here override string key public override string value get set. Uh, also important thing to notice here, in some situations the keys which are on the right hand left hand side, sometimes there are all caps locks, sometimes there are lowercase. So in order to use them accordingly inside the application, we uh, at some point have to check something. It's the best to know the lowercase values of these. So I'm going to also put in public string key, which will also just have get and will return key to lower. And I will do the same thing for the for the value, of course. Let's 
Uh, are we missing something? Oh, we missed this. And this is basically it. Now for the text value itself, uh, that's not a big of a problem. Now, since all of the text values, uh, let's find one uh, bad example. Let's go here. Let's go here. We have the la oh, oops, language. So left hand side is the parameter equals the value inside quotation marks and it ends with a semicolon. So at this point we can uh, put in, let's just change the line itself. We can type in line equals string start t, just in case it starts with indentations like this one, for example. And we will also trim end with the semicolon. And now the key that we will store is actually line substring, substring of the line from zero to line index of uh, index of this because at this point we'll go from 0 to let's say in, in this case it's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 uh, whatever okay 5 <laughs> so the index of this is 4 and we'll take the first four letters which is ping which is exactly what we need actually now, we will also remove that part, we don't need that anymore. So line equals line, remove from 0 to a line index of, so basically the same thing as the upper one, plus 1. So we can remove the equals mark as well. Now for the value, at some point like we could just type in the line, but remember that the line starts with the quotation marks. So we will type in line, trim start, and for the same thing on the end. Okay, so this is basically it for the text value. Now, of course, we will have to print this again as well. So let's make another public override of the to string. Now for the printing, let's go with this. First we'll take the indentation builder. Then we'll take the key equals. Now the quotation marks kind of work funny with this. So let's just add another public, uh, ah, private, internal, string quote, which is just this. And then we can just type in quote, copy paste this three times and change the middle one to value. And at the end, just put in the semicolon. And this is basically, this is basically it. There's nothing else we need from this class at this point. So we can just copy paste this and uh, now let's go for the binding value. So the binding value, of course we have to remain, rename this as well. All of this mostly stays the same, but we don't need this part as the binding part does not have quotation marks. We can just leave this as is because we're not going to work with this anyway. So we can again save this and we can go on on to the uh, numbers let's go first with the double double value double. if we take a look at how the double value is formed there is a one thing that we will have to take a look at first some countries don't have the same delimiter as others. Sometimes it's a comma, sometimes it's a dot. So we have to take that into consideration as well. So let's actually add here, uh, let's just call it a private string delimiter. 
and that will equal well not equal we'll just have a nice little get so return thread current thread of course we have to add threading for this so inside current thread there is current culture inside current culture there is a number format dot current decimal separator and this is what we basically need of course I could have just used this but it's too long it's too long to put inside here so let's just go with this you don't really need anything else at this point we can go with the line the line again and the key is the same thing but when we remove this we are going to have to convert it into a double so here we come to a problem we want this to be a double but if it's a double then it can be a string but if I put double here then we have a problem because a double can't override a string so instead of this we can just use dynamic type of course, we are going to have to change all of the values at this point. The virtuals and the overrides. And at this point, we can just continue working with this normally. Uh, so, when we remove this, we now only have the double value as is. But we have to check if the limiter matches what we have. So we can just call in this uh, replace dot and we can replace this with the delimiter. Oh, I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> My bad. Double value. Oh, okay. Replace the dot with the delimiter. And of course, we have to convert this to double. And with this, we have successfully solved the problems of the doubles. Uh, there are no need for the quotes here. No need for this. I'm just cleaning up some of the stuff. As, as well, I can remove this. Everything else stays as it is. Now we need to do the same thing for integers. Int value. Convert to int32. We don't need the delimiter here, since integers don't have a delimiter. And again, this is basically it. Okay, so the last piece of the puzzle is the boolean value. So let's call it bool value. Config entry, this as well stays dynamic. Oh, ho, ho. let's keep this dynamic as well. Because at this point, we do not want to remove this and dynamic we don't basically need this at this point but let's keep it just to avoid any type of errors or anything like that so for the bool for integer and for double one value stays as it is even that does make sense. Ah, ah, let's just keep it this way. It's a string anyway, so it's gonna work. Let's do this. Now, the problem is we have to check here if the value is 1 or 0. So instead of, once we remove this, we can just put this inside of an if. If this value equals 1, we can set the value as true, else value equals false. And we are done with this as well. Uh, now the problem is, if this is a boolean value, 
which is it, which it is. Uh, we do not want to return true or false here. We want to return zero or one. So we can just create integer val. Let's just call it val equals value question mark one zero. So this is a small one line if let's call it that way. And we forget how this is called. So if the value is true, it will say one. If the value is false, it will say zero. And then instead of the value, we can just type in val. Okay, so at this point, we have pretty much set up the base of our operations. Let's call it that way. Uh, missing the semicolon here. In the next video, we'll take a look at how to actually load in the files. We'll just change a bit some change some things, add some methods over here into the config entry like load files and whatnot. So stay tuned for the next video and I will see you see you then.